We're going to talk about why women are crazy. And I'm not joking about that. Women are nuts, according to men. Now, let's really quickly kind of define what I mean by that. So whenever we talk about someone being crazy, we're talking about how they are straying far from the norm. And if you're a man and you have male friends, uh, you're going to have a sense of what is normal according to the male perspective. And women veer from that in a pretty extreme way in several different categories. And as a couples counselor, I've seen, you know, kind of five categories really ratch up the tension in a relationship. And the, these are the things that really make men think women are nuts. So let's go over them really quickly one by one so you can understand where those areas of differences are. Now, my hope is as you understand this more, if you're a woman listening to this, you'll be able to uh, connect with your husband and explain why you're different so that he can realize the differences. And if you're a man, hopefully it'll give you some coping techniques or mechanisms to alleviate some of the stress and tension in the relationship because of the differences that exist between you and your wife. So the first one, and by the way, these are kind of sweeping generalizations. You will have more feminine men. You will have more masculine women. Uh, that is not to say that if you have one of these qualities as a man, you are feminine. It's just a classically more cross-culturally feminine uh, quality, but you could still be a kind of masculine alpha male and have many of these uh, traits. So the first one is uh, the comfort with expressing emotion. Men tend to not be super comfortable expressing emotion. There's a stoicism. If, you, if you're if you on YouTube or in, in anywhere in the social media, you'll see that men value stoicism or a large percentage of them, the idea that they can cut themselves off from emotion and the reason is uh, twofold. One, we like the idea of really uh, being able to cut ourselves off from emotion so that we can focus on logic because there's a high value placed on logic, predictability, uh, and similarly, on the second hand, emotion can be viewed as a weakness, right? So if you are looking at emotions from a purely vulnerability standpoint if someone sees that you're sad they can exploit that and so we want to kind of protect it and having a, a kind of a internal life that isn't viewable to the outside world keeps you safer and men tend to like feeling safer especially because they are typically tasked with the safety of their family and so if you have to be safe not just for your own well-being, but for the safety of your wife and children, you're going to learn how to be more stoic because you don't want anybody else to view you as weak and so that they can overtake your wife or your family, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Um, especially because you are the one who in a physical altercation is going to be responsible. Compare that to women where they have more of a threat, generally speaking, right? They're physically not as formidable. They have a sexual danger to them that most men don't walk around with. But because they know they aren't going to win in most physical altercations, especially with a large man, they don't hide their emotions because that doesn't really help them, right? If someone is going to attack them, they're going to attack them whether or not they think they're watching unless they have some kind of, you know, really kind of fierce physical impression that they should not be toyed with. So their technique is to express emotions in order to kind of connect with other people, and get that safety, namely from their partner most, most of the time. The second way that men and women are different and really kind of drives men up a wall is that women tend to be more verbal in the sense that they use communication, they use talking to build relationships. All right, so that's why kind of the stereotypes of women talking on the phone or being able to just chat for hours and hours exist. They use it to fuse relationships. Now, if you're in a marriage or even just dating and, you're, and your girlfriend or your wife wants to talk and talk and talk and you're a man, you're like, what's the point of all this? I don't understand. We already talked about this seven times. Sometimes it's revisiting things you've already talked about because it felt good to talk about it. Women have that tendency. Men don't get that. They think that it's it's insanity. I've even had a, a patient who said, 
I don't understand. Isn't the definition of insanity doing the same thing again and again and expecting different results? My wife talks about the same thing again and again and again, and she expects the conversation to go somewhere different, but it always ends the same with me being grumpy because she's bringing up the same thing over and over again. Why is she not getting this? Is she insane? Does she need medication? <laughs> he got really irritable. So it, it's, it, it can kind of get a little bit edgy because men don't understand the point. And confusion to men uh, in this regard is is in beyond irritating it can be maddening because they don't like the idea of not understanding so hopefully if you understand you're talking just to connect that kind of um adds a bit of an anchor to why that conversation's even taking place so the third one is what the stress response typically is for men and women so men have a very simple fight or flight response when it comes to stress Occasionally, they have a fix, so fight, 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 flight, fix, or sometimes freeze, uh, but it's very kind of animalistic. Uh, you know, different parts of the brain are signaled. You're in stress mode, and, you know, the they, they all communicate with each other to go get out of here or fight, and it's very... Um, very straightforward. Now, if you are in an actual life and death situation or one where there's serious physical or even financial harm, that's great because you need to act quickly and decide whether you're going to fight or run away and kind of get safety. But in today's day and age, most things aren't life and death. Most things are not actually uh, high risk. It's very rare that unless you have a very high risk job, it's very rare that people expose themselves so much because of the comforts of the first world countries having kind of a lack of threat. So it's kind of built more for this feminine uh, response, which is to befriend, right? They call it tend and befriend. So if you feel stress, you want to be able to share, get it off your chest, express the emotion, which is a response that needs to happen after the fight or flight to get rid of the trauma, but they just skip over the fight and flight. And they go, no, no, I need somebody to talk to. I need to get it off my chest. I even have some clients where the wife, not only when she's stressed, tells her husband, she then calls her mom, and then her mom tries to calm her down. If that doesn't work, she calls her friend. If that friend doesn't work, she calls her sister. Then she calls her mom again and tells her what the sister and the friend said. Then she goes back to her husband and her husband says, we've already talked about this. Then she calls her mom and says, my husband is so rude. And then she calls her sister and says, my mom said, I should do this with my husband. What do you think? And then they conference call, right? So there's this, there's this tendency to constantly want to really talk about it till the nervousness calms down. And that's connected to your neuroticism, right? Women tend to have a higher sense of neuroticism, which is that kind of threshold for pain and, and, and whatnot. The fourth one is risk aversion, and women tend to be less risk averse than men, and uh, you see this in couples counseling, very pronounced in the field of business, right? So if a man wants to uh, make an investment, take some risk, and actually try to earn some extra income or do some marketing or try on some salespeople, whatever it is, right? They they are more likely to say, we gotta take, we gotta take a shot, we gotta do this, we might lose everything, but we have to, right? There's that pressure to provide financially that kind of offsets the risk aversion, you know, so that they say they, they need to, right? Whereas women are much more conservative. You see this definitely in the investment world. If you talk to financial advisors when they deal with single men and single women, different profile uh overall of what kind of investments they want to make. And so this risk aversion can also drive men nuts, right? Because the you know they'll say, I don't understand. She thinks we're going to, you know, put a put our money in a two percent or a five percent uh interest bearing account and suddenly be rich. It never works that way. You have to take risk. And the web's like, no, I don't want it. If he's gonna spend the money, I'm gonna divorce him. And it can it can really ratchet up to that high and it drives men insane. They think the, the wives are crazy. Like, don't they see the math that will never reach her financial goals? Is she crazy? Right. Men get just completely turned around by the lack of logic. And women have a risk aversion that's stopping them from talking from on a logical level. It's a different part of the mind. It's the kind of the emotional mind that takes over, not the uh, not the logical mind. So. That's a big area of contention for a lot of couples struggling in finances specifically. Occasionally, you'll see this on a physical side where like the man might be more into skydiving and bungee jumping and the woman's like, no, no, no. But that's less and less. And a lot of men are having, especially today in today's day and age where physicality is so safe, I've seen men 
definitely decrease their sense of risk on the physical side and women increase kind of to match up. So that's less of an issue. Now, the fifth and the most prominent way men and women are different and from my view is multitasking. Women have a tendency to be much, much better at multitasking. They're able to do two or three things at the same time. As a man, I can't. I'm, I can really only do one thing at a time. Uh, and so much so that I think multitasking is a myth. I don't think that you can do two things at once effectively. And women always laugh when I say that. But that's that's the way I feel. Like if you're going to do the dishes and hold a conversation, maybe because there's a physical component versus a cognitive component. And so if you can kind of put one on autopilot, maybe. But, you know, the multitasking to me is like I just don't understand how it works. And I'm always impressed when people can do it effectively because it's like a magic trick to me. Now, where this drives men crazy uh more so than just watching multitasking, because some men say they can multitask, is what's going on internally, what's going on mentally with your wife. And you, men just don't get it. Men don't understand that as women are doing the laundry or they're going to work or they're with their kids or they're just you know reading a book, while they're doing these tasks, they're also thinking about what else needs to be done in the house, financially where they are, whose birthday is coming up, if they bought a gift, who, you know, your husband's birthday or your husband's mom's birthday and how he's going to forget to get her a gift and how you have to go remind him to get a card and a gift. There's 17 things going on in a woman's head at any given moment from what I've seen generally with relationships. And men just don't get that. The kind of the, the joke I always tell people is when I'm giving a counseling session, I forget that I have a wife and children most of the time. And women laugh and men go, yeah, what do you mean? Because you know, when they're at work, they forget they're married. It's not they forget and they'll like fall into a trap to flirt with another woman. It's just the focus is 100% on, on the task at hand and the other stuff disappears. Whereas for women, it's always floating around. And that kind of forces them to multitask because there's this ever presence of mental load. Now, as a husband, one thing you can do to help with that is understand that don't put that you should not put more mental load on your wife. The classic example is, what do you need me to help you with? Not a, not a fantastic question to ask a woman because then she has to stop, organize the 17 things in her head and said, I guess he could do this and not screw it up. And that process takes time. It takes cognitive energy and they'd rather just do it themselves half the time, which is why I always tell men, if you're going to help around the house or by doing chores, Pitch ideas to your wife. Instead of saying, what can I help you with? What do you need help with? Say, is the laundry done? Do you want me to handle that? Do you need me to go to the grocery store? Are the kids all okay? Yes, no binary kind of questions are going to help relieve a lot of that mental load for a woman. So those are the five areas that I find men tend to look at women and go, you're nuts, and how you can help with each one, uh, or at least have a better cognitive approach so that you don't go as crazy, or that you can inform your husband and make sure he understands why you guys are so different. I'm Dr. John DeBach. I hope this was helpful and I will see you next time.